still need to finish it. <laughs> you still have it? <laughs> Not to this day. I stopped, I stopped like, I stopped I think like at 10. Why is it that I wasn't even a big fan of her, but really all three of us stopped after Monkey Girl died. Yeah. I think again, it just has to do with her power. She was just made to be likable. Yeah. Oh, it, but I also I even told like Ben, I'm all like, she's automatically less attractive because she's already spoken for. Yeah. No. <laughs> for me, I was like, for me, when I saw it, I was like, it was not the less made her less attractive. I was just like, ah, uh, that's a death flag right there. If I ever saw one, mm -hmm. was like, mm. it it was like watching Magical Girl. Racing project all over again. Yeah. It's like, oh, she's pregnant with a child. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome, welcome back to a brand new episode of Busted Musket Productions and Amazing. Uh, just like uh, similar to today's show, we put very little effort, but pretend we put a lot. <laughs> <coughs> I choked on the water. That was, oh, almost murdered you. <laughs> anyway, guys. If that, um, if that vague, <laughs> if that vague opening didn't, um, give you guys a clue, we will, in fact, be talking about Hiyoka, a 2012 Kyo Annie anime, mm -hmm. which, because it's Kyo Annie, it really does not look like it was something that old. It looks fucking gorgeous. Oh, yeah. And it's pretty much like the series is pretty much based off of a web novelization, um, of a light novelization um, from 2001. Whereas, like, the anime focuses on four of the five stories that were actually published. Yeah. Four of the five? Wait, so this is a finished series? Yeah! Hmm, I have to find spoilers online to see how this story closes out. <laughs> you, had, you had one... I, I'm gonna say this again, because I, I have a friend that wants us to talk about... Um... Um, a silent voice, which... As you know, I love the manga, but I'm indifferent with the movie. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say what I said when I was talking to someone about Silent Voice. You had one job, Kyo Annie. You could not put just a little bit more effort and threw in a couple of more episodes in there. Because the way this show ends infuriated me. <laughs> Similar to how I still believe that turning a silent voice into a movie, albeit a good idea animation-wise, was a bad idea narrative-wise. <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that one day. I mainly don't want to talk about it because I have bad things to say about a character. <laughs> and to insult that character is to insult a friend of the podcast. Kira Buckland plays you, I know. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> yeah. It, it's funny because when we interviewed her all those years ago, well, like two years ago by now, oh shit, it's almost. No, no, no. Neon Amada came out in 2017, right? Yes. Right, we, right, right, right. We've only interviewed like four people, um, and three out of those four, three out of those uh, four interviews are actually from. 2017. Uh, yeah, no, with Kira Buckland, I remember her telling me, yeah, I hope one day I get to pop up in one of those anime movies that run based off like a manga. And obviously that's when she out of nowhere popped up in... What was that movie called again, the one I gave you? Oh, the... Why did I forget it? We love that movie. In the Corner of This World. Yeah, um, she was in the Corner of This World. Also an unlikable character. Well, it started off as unlikable, but, you know, you end up to really like her and everyone else. Um, and then, and then, yeah, she pops up. This was the first one I found out, though. She popped up as Ueno from A Silent Voice, and I'm just like... I, I tweeted at her just saying, congratulations on being on a movie role. And then what she does not know and what other people don't know, I deleted another sentence saying, it's just a shame there was an extremely bitchy character. <laughs> I hated that character, man. I really felt like, like that was the one character that I'm all like, it feels like you were setting up a redemption, but I don't think she was redeemed enough to be forgiven. <laughs> I feel she was redeemed enough in the manga, but <laughs> I haven't watched the movie yet, so I don't yeah. know how they, how they, how they No, no, you know. that's the thing. I'm talking about, like, the manga, too. Oh, really? Yeah, like, in the manga, yeah, you know, she pulled together to help them make the movie and all that. But, like, they did, you know, like, with his best friend, who turned out to be very unlikable, but then they redeemed him. Her, I'm just like, you were just so nasty. I think we needed, like, a few more chapters with you. <laughs> just a little bit! But, again, like, you're right, she was redeemed way more, 
And in this movie, she was just the mainly to be the antagonist and had the little quick scene that redeemed her in the manga, but it was so small in the movie that it just... Yeah, okay. Well, we'll talk about that. But yeah, Kiyomani, just... <laughs> just if if it's if it ain't a what if it ain't like an original movie or if it ain't like or if it's a really short manga series, make an anime out of it, please. If it goes over with the mangas, fucking make a manga out of the imperfect girl over there, dude. All I gotta say, if anything for Kiwani, I give them props for Chuni Boyo Demo Koi Ga Shitai. Um, love Chuni Boyo and other delusions. That was them. I thought that was P A. Oh yeah, no, no, it's Kiwani. Oh. Oh yeah, then I gotta give it to them too. That anime is gorgeous. Three seasons and then movies. A lot of movies. A lot of movies. Um, Especially the last one, Take On Me. I have that poster for that one. Ah, yeah. Such a good date movie. Yeah, you did a review for that. It was a one person review, but we had a review in that in the anime guitars episode. Yeah. Which I'm so... I, I don't know why, what was up with this show. But there was just some weird structuring thing that I was expecting Hioka to take the weird turn that anime guitars did. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, maybe it was because it was like a classic literature club suddenly becoming a detective club. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, miss is someone gonna start like doing horrible crimes based off classic literature? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, no. But anyway, let's, um, let's go ahead and talk about um, 2012's Hioka. Sorry, people's earlobes. Nope. Knowing the brightness will not help your case. That is true. But if you can't see it, you can block it off. Also, this wasn't the director of Mona Guitari, right? I don't think it was. I don't believe so. I'll look it up, but there was... <laughs> there was like... Have you guys seen the Mona Guitari series? Or did Mona Guitari rip you off? I need to see who came out first. But that was even like sound cues. Yep. No, dude, especially like the first time when they showed Chitanda when she was curious. Mm hmm. Oh, there was that one where he's talking about how he was kicked into rewriting an ending. Yeah. And he was in a movie theater with hands clapping, but when they show the movie theater, the hands are just like little automatons. I'm like, that's so good a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. No, yeah, dude. That was funny when they were, well, when they when they asked him to like solve the mystery of the movie. Yeah, that, that was great. That in the school festival. Was yeah. <laughs> that that one actually turned out to be like really funny. <laughs> yeah. What was it that he called it? What? Because you know there was a term for it like when you like when you get something from somebody else and then you use it to trade for something else that someone needed. I forgot. But I know what you're talking about. the The story was like you 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 get a piece of straw and then you. And then you keep trading it until you become rich. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Someone's like, yo, when are we going to get reviewed? When you freaking end <laughs> Exactly. The, yeah, you goddamn 25. 25, I think. 24, 25. I don't know. It's long, and I haven't kept up with the series. I haven't even seen the new Shield Hero, because apparently they took a break on the dub. <clears throat> so I'm probably going to have to watch it in Japanese when I get home. <laughs> Avengers uh, of Subs. Yeah. Advantages of subs. Right. Yeah, they don't have to worry. They, they don't have to worry about inconspicuous things. Hold, hold up. So anime. Um, Bakemon to. Okay. So yeah, Kyo Ami are somebody. Uh, Kyo. Yeah, Kyo Ami are somebody like. Saw that. Um. Saw. Uh. Bakemonika, Bakemonika Tari and saw like the directing style and basically did that with this show. From the looks of it, I'm even trying to see if there's a name I recognize in the cast that like ended up doing Kyoka, but I don't recognize one. Mm. Oh, and also the guy I was thinking of was Akiyuki Shinbo. Oh, which shouldn't be that hard to remember because of uh, Gigug's joke. Yeah, does his name rhyme with Maki Uki Mishbo? No. And then they hang up on like the guy's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, when did this series come out? 2012. No, the, sorry, the manga series. Oh, it's a light novel. It's a light novel. It's 2001. 2000? It's that old? Yeah. 
Hiyoka. Oh, you know what? I'm thinking of the manga that was made to uh, coincide with it. Yeah, because the manga was pretty much illustrated afterwards, but it's based on a novel that was made in 2001 regarding like this mystery series. Yeah, um, 2000... Yeah, ooh, actually that's a hell of a time to come out. October 31st, 2001. <laughs> And, and, and like, you know, like we talked about last week, I don't know if it was on the audio, um, so I don't know if you guys will hear it, but I remember looking at the cover for this and I'm like, this is so like, this is so suspicious looking, is this going to be like some fucked up horror series? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thankfully it wasn't. Uh, so how about you kick us off? So, <clears throat> Hyoka, pretty much start, it's pretty much like, um, starts in like in Kamiya High School where our protagonist, Oreki Hotaro, is a guy who pretty much tries to live a life of energy efficiency, to put it nicely. <laughs> yeah, so basically he's just a big lazy jerk, but, you know, he's conserving energy. Yeah. And will not do something if it requires too much effort. <laughs> oh yeah, but behind all that thing and everything, he is a genius as well. And pretty much like somebody who's like, as you mentioned, like as you see later on in the series, Kind of wants to change once he gets exposed to the kind of like um, that what he describes as a rose-colored life. Yeah. Or in Japanese, barairo. Yeah. I I've heard that phrase said so many times. Already memorized it. <laughs> so um yeah yeah like it, it's one of those classic stories. I'm kind of a douchey male or female, and then I meet this one person that kind of changes my aspect and changes the way I think and eventually act. Ah, what's that one show with that guy from, from uh, uh, the one with Hachiman? Fuck. Hachiman. Oh, uh, Snafu. Snafu. There you go. My, my teen romantic, romantic comedy, Snafu. So think of it like that. Yeah, but wasn't that guy like a borderline serial killer? Like my friend told me he had like a murder list. Oh, no. He was just really, he was just really crass. He just didn't, he just didn't like people in general. Mm -hmm. Whereas like Oreke Hotaro is just like, he's not that he didn't like people, he just didn't want to, he just like didn't want to like, um, like, didn't want to like um, waste his energy too much. Yeah, and his closest friend was one of those, I try to get rid of him, but I don't know why he keeps coming back. He stuck to him, yeah. Yeah, like a bad itch. Um, like a barnacle. Yeah, a barnacle. Uh, what a, or is it a barnacle? I'm trying to think, what are those things that stick onto whales and like eat um, things off them? Algae? Oh, you mean the pilot fish? Yeah, yeah, those things. So they stick onto whales and they like eat the barnacles that try to grow on them. Yeah. Mm. Yes, thank you, biology, even though I didn't pass you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he's like that. And it's funny due to what we're going to be reviewing for the next month. But almost immediately, uh, Fukube, who is the um, said parasite person in question. Um, <laughs> parasitic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I wouldn't take the relationship that far, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> it ain't that bad. It, it, if anything, it could be one of those things where it's like, I know if I leave him alone, the dude will probably kill himself. So I'm, I'm gonna just stick around for a bit. It worked out for the, for, for the better for Ricky in the long run. Yeah. Um, and then you end up really liking, you end up like really liking that character. Like I kind of like how the whole trait of Fukube was, he was basically a human encyclopedia. Yeah. He knew a bunch of useless information, but he was also like a fashion, he was also kind of like in tuned with fashion. But it was kind of that crazy fashion, so every yeah. now and then you'd see him in a crazy-ass costume. <laughs> yeah, because he was in the sewing club. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, oh, shit. Um, what was the... Um, oh, um, it, it was when they went to the inn, and one of the little girls had a kimono, and he said, she doesn't have the proper sash. Oh, well, yeah. So I will not... <laughs> I will not... Um, Acknowledge it as, a, as an actual kimono. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. So, 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 so snarky like you fashionistas are. But I ended up really liking that character because they kind of reveal something in the end and it mm -hmm. kind of made that character less fun and a little more tragic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm only doing this because I don't think I'm good at anything else and I've accepted that. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Um, anyway, sorry, uh, sorry, we, we jumped the gun, I jumped the gun there. Um, so, yeah, so, so we have that, we, but things kind of change when... His sister pretty much, um, his sister pretty much sends a mail to Oreki, telling him how, 
pretty much like she used to be a member of this some um, of this club um, club in school called the Classic Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember. Classic Lit. The Classic Literature Club. That's there you why, go. That's why I was thinking another Grand Blue thing, but it but they're in a specific club, but they barely do anything in regards to that club. <laughs> no, but they did for the first like six episodes. They they did for it. It, it was a little more because the only time I ever noticed them really go into classic lit was when they were working on the anthology. Yeah. Anthology. So the anthology, yeah, you're right. For six episodes, it was classic lit because they literally were talking, uh, they literally had to use it to solve a dis not a disappearance, but like a, a thing that one of the characters forgot. Yeah. And then it would come back later when they were trying to sell their anthology series. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Well, Half of the time, it really is just like them solving like little mysteries and sometimes yeah. really big mysteries. So it gave me a little bit of that grand blue feeling, but I'm just glad because these characters are really cute and adorable and young that I'm really glad it was just mystery solving and not heavy binge drinking. Oh my god! But the fact that they're young makes the end makes the ending makes the ending song that much more awkward. What ending song? The ending for Hyoka. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that was a little dark. A, a little bit of a weird ending. But again... Cause, like, cause again, man, cause, cause the thing with KyoAni, whenever they have like cute girls and everything, they always have to lose them in some way for their, like, their ending themes. Oh, you were talking about the ending theme! Yeah, the second ending theme was fine. Yes! But then the first one was just like, oh, this is fetishy. And some of the figurines of you two somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically in this clothing. Um, so what, what, one of the things I've noticed, I don't know if this is, in the, this is a thing in the manga. Did you read the manga? No, I, I, just, I just like watched the series. Oh, okay. Because I was wondering. So this is in 2012 and we would have a silent voice in 2016. I find it funny that they adapted two series where the older sister was, you never saw her face. And they would like cleverly hide her face, but where that was an actual thing in a silent voice, I don't know if that was an actual thing in Hioka, or if that was just a thing they decided to do for the anime's sake. I'm not really sure either, because a lot of the things, like the one thing that you gotta think about, especially her sister and everything, is that... <clears throat> this is like the funny part about it. It's like you can tell like this is actually like these siblings are actually pretty gifted when it comes to what they do and everything. Mm -hmm. Because while Oreki is like really sharp and everything, especially intuitive when it comes to like um just, just like using clues and like making theories and everything, it's just it's kind of like a step above that as well. Because especially when it comes to like not only <laughs> especially like you know like when he when he joined the classic club, he was like thinking like was this all part of his sister's plan or is it just something that just came out of this? Yeah, but and and, and that was the thing too. It's like. You, you do kind of question how much the sister might know is going on because, again, like, we'll get to it in a bit, but that classic literature club was like, now why in the hell were you carrying around the exact copy of a manga that was kind of the key to everything going on? <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> how, how did you have that? Why, why were you just walking around with it? <laughs> uh, but, but again, like, you know, it's, it's a thing they pop up every now and then. And she would somehow even know things before he even brought it up. Like, right? when she tells him where to find the other anthologies, and it's like, uh, and he's like, oh, good timing, sis. It's like, how did she know you needed those? Well, uh, again, like when, when you think about it, this is where you have to do like one of those like big brain things as well. She, it, these two are kind of like detectives of anything. So her reasoning is what I'm guessing. And she's realizing that it's almost time for the Kamiya High School Festival. Yeah. And she's thinking like, oh, they're probably gonna be, they probably might, might do like an anthology or something because you know refreshments are banned from like being being sold in the um, on in the festival. So they might so they might continue them. Um, they might continue the, the tradition of the as a, um, of the classic lit club. I can't believe I never noticed that. I didn't realize there wasn't a single, like, food stand at all. <laughs> wow, how did I miss that? <laughs> That's why I'm like, I, I find it really weird. There's not a single bake sale going on here. It's like, oh, okay, I, I actually didn't catch that. I, I did not catch that at all. Um, but, but yeah, so, so he gets, uh, he basically gets told by his big sister, please save Classic Lit Club. If no one makes it, then, you know, the legacy will die. Mm. And it's another one of those cases where 
where it's like, if I don't join this club, my sister will kick my ass too. He doesn't outright like uh, uh, tell me, but like my sister does know a form of martial arts, so I, I better do what she says. Um, and hopefully no one will join the club anyway, anyway, so I won't have to do anything. Yep. But when he goes into the locked classroom, mind you, um, he finds a mysterious girl in there by the name of Chitanda... Edu. Um, Edu. There we go. Okay, because, again, uh, the, the reason why the dub wasn't the best in the world is that the pronunciations are really bad. Oh, yeah? So there were times where they'd say Edo Chitanda so fast that it sounded like they were saying um, Edo Chitanda. Oh, like it gets combined. Yeah, so every now and then I, I thought her name was Edo Chitanda. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, so, so her name was Edo. Okay. Yeah, um, who is just a PA works in, sorry, PA, um, Kyo Annie's signature girl who is so adorable that you just want to squeeze the life out of her cheeks. <laughs> um, but he goes in, they introduce each other, and that's when he kind of drops, you know you were locked in this room, I had to go and get the key. And she's like, wait, who locked me in there? Like, who locked me in there knowing I was in there? Please, I have to know. And every time she does that, it, it, it's um, it's like a, basically a catchphrase by this point. Yeah. But every time she does that, she gets like this shine in her big eyes. A very beautiful effect. But I think what's really cool is, for the first couple of episodes at least, there would be a unique animation that they did with her. Yeah. And then pretty much, so what was the cat, how did, how did her catfish, cat, catchphrase go when it was in, in the dub? Um, Just out of curiosity. It was, um, it was a sentence leading up to stating the mystery and saying, I have to know. Oh. Please, oh. I have to know. It, it'd go between the two. Oh, because then like in the, in the sub and everything, like she'd always say like, Kini narimasu, which means I'm curious. Oh, okay. Man, that probably didn't um, match up with the lip with the lip syncing at all. So they that's probably why they had to teach it, uh, change it. But yeah, that actually sounds a lot more adorable. I need to hear the dub. The, the sub, sub, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think if anything, that might get you a little bit more. And <clears throat> yeah, like you mentioned, pretty much. So the thing with Chitanda is she's pretty much like she's really she's a really intelligent girl and everything. But she's easily like she's I mean like. Um, really easily, like her curiosity is easily captivated by like the simplest of mysteries and everything. Mm -hmm. Only because she's kind of like, I guess the best way to say she's kind of like a she's kind of like a puppy discovering the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like um, like it's funny because for a person who's not into mystery novels all that much, she really is a little you know what um, the characters call at one point a chaos monkey. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, she, because like again she is. Uh, anything will like catch your curiosity like like I need to figure out I, I need to figure I want to know like why why the why the script writer never came back to finish the movie and how the movie actually ends yeah or I need to know why I was locked in or um what was another example another really oh the the, 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 the secret club Oh, the, the Spider <laughs> Society? I love that one. The Spider Society. <laughs> but somewhere there's a legitimately good manga idea in there, and someone needs to jump on that. <laughs> I'm just, I, if no one does, I will. <laughs> because I swear to God, I was so bummed out when you found out it was just a ruse. It, it, it was... Okay. <laughs> so let's get something a little straight about our main protagonist right here. Um... <laughs> Again, he, he's a lazy man, and um, even though there's something, love, uh, there's something about Edu that just, like, he can't say no to her. Like, one of the big things when she tells him, when she tells him, like, I need to know why I was locked in the room, they do this beautiful animation sequence where her hair is just, like, Wrapping around, him. And wrapping around him and like these exotic flowers. I don't know if those are real flowers, like a real oh. type of flower, are just like blooming everywhere and like encapsulating the room and coming out of her hair. It, it and and it's just like mesmerizing him. There's also a really cute one. It was it, it was supposed to have the same effect 
were it was little angels, little cute oh, yeah. angels of her. <laughs> when like, you went to go to Spider Man, like holding his hand and everything. Yeah, and you just see all these little angels crawling all over him, and and saying, "I'm curious, I'm curious," or in the dub's case, "I have to know." Um, and uh, so, so like. He's a person, though, that for the first couple of episodes, he doesn't like to put too much effort into the mystery. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to go too far. Hello, if they have to go somewhere far, then I'll try to push it on the other three. Um, so what ended up happening was in episode two, they found out that one of the girls found a ghost in the music room. And uh, Chitanda was spending all day looking for it and kind of spreading the rumor herself. Yeah. Um, so he knew that once Chitanda came, she was going to want to figure out about the ghost. But that meant that the music class was all the way across the school. And, um, um, and, and what was the guy saying again? Which one? The, the main guy. Oh, Oroki. Um, Oroki. That, that, um, that he was just like, I don't want to go across the school. So him and, um, him and, uh, Fukube, Fukube, I was going to say Fubuki. I knew that was wrong. <laughs> Fubuki. <laughs> um, so, um, with, uh, Fubuki, Fukube, Fukube, thank you. Um, they kind of put together the story about a fa about a mysterious club that is not recognized by the executive council and doesn't have permission to exist, but they have, you know, they have the members, they have the class president, and basically that was an attempt at catching the meeting, but was regardless a failure yeah. until one of the graduating classmen said, yo, what's up? I was actually the class president of the Spider Society and I want you to give regards to my replacement, but you'll never find him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so, she, so like immediately, Chitanda, who we knew, wanted to, originally came in wanting to know about the ghost, is distracted and wants to find out evidence at this secret... Um, Keep going. Okay. She wanted to find evidence at this secret society, a uh, class club existed. Yeah. So in order to do that, it's like, okay, well, the one we're going to have to check is like the bulletin board closest to the school because that's closest to the entrance because that's the one that's most likely will be examined first. So they find it. And then in the end, it's revealed. And Chitanda still doesn't know to this day. But in the end, it is revealed like... Yeah, it was a story we put together because there was no way in hell I was going to walk all the way back <laughs> just to tell you guys, oh, it was a student sleeping in school overnight so she wouldn't be late for a recital. <laughs> and then, like, to explain pretty much, like, why, like, why, um, why Beethoven's more like Sonata was playing while the piano was there, she probably just, like, put that as an alarm clock. Yeah. And which is why, like, um, which is why it disappeared as fast as they, um, noticed it. Yep. But, and... And again, Kyo Annie might want to think about doing a horror show because that animation style was very effective. <laughs> that was a very creepy sequence uh, with all the hands coming out. Oh, and in case you're curious, <laughs> what? This is pretty much how it was. Um, this is to show you pretty much like not only the um, not only how she sounds in 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 the, in the in the sub, but also like just to pretty much show like what it looks like. The scene you were describing about the flower. Oh. No. Are those lotuses? Oh, probably. No. Oh, and that was her saying it? Yep. That's literally how she says it every time. There was going to be an alternate opening to the little catchphrase I said. Yeah. I almost forgot. Yeah, so if you guys remember, I made a joke about how, like, our podcast is just as lazy as, um, as, um, Hotere. Um, 
But the alternate opening would have been um, Hioka, the prime example of waifus destroying waifus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, so so um, uh, basically, again, it was a ruse to just be like, I want to get as close as the entrance as possible. Because... And to kind of take um, Kitanda's sort of curiosity at the same time for that day. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the, the reason you guys heard Moonlight, Senyata, and the ghost girl was because it, it was an alarm clock and there were students sleeping overnight. Uh, but, like, another thing... Um, uh, oh, right, now you also remember where, where I left off exactly was... It's funny because even though that scene was actually kind of creepy, the animation sequence they had, all I could think about, because it was the same song, Moonlight Senyata... I, all I could think about was ghost stories again. <laughs> oh, I was yeah. just imagining like a piano chasing that girl down the alleyway. <laughs> no, wait. That wasn't Moonlight Sonata, was no? it? No? No, yeah, yeah. I think, what was it? Or was it for Elise? In my way. Because it's the one that was like... Na, 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 na. That's for Elise? That's for Elise, I think. Yeah, that was it then. Okay, never mind. I got them confused. But yeah, that one, like, all I can imagine now uh, is a photo of Antonio Banderas chasing a girl down with a piano down an alleyway. <laughs> yeah, because remember, that was the thing where it's like, the piano's not where the ghost is coming from. It's that! A photo of Antonio Banderas? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I remember that from Ghost Stories. <laughs> oh, God, that guy seriously watched Ghost Stories. It's a treasure. <laughs> it is a goddamn treasure. The dub. The dub. Yes, the dub. Because the anime isn't that. Um, the the anime itself isn't really that good. I remember that was the thing because Ben couldn't make it to that episode, but he had still seen it, and like even Ben was like, you know, the show is funny, and I'm like, yeah, exactly. You, we're not watching it. We're not talking about it because we thought it was a good show. We're talking about it because the dub is fucking amazing. <laughs> um, but apparently that is. Like in Southeast Asia, there is a dub that is way more in tune to the original source material. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. I, I didn't know it either. I think it's also mainly due to the fact that it is freaking difficult to find, apparently. Um, but I can believe that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because no one really cares. No one really cares for a dub um, unless it's this one. So, anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, heading into, like, the big mystery for it as well. Because oh, yeah. the thing about this series, of anything, it kind of, like, uses these mysteries to build the characters before they tackle the main mystery of that arc, of anything. Mm-hmm. Because every, um, every, um, every, like, six to, like, every six to seven episodes, pretty much the show covers, like, an, um, pretty much covers one of the books that was written, um, that was written of the light novelization. Yeah. So the first novel, Hyoka... And you pretty much realize how, like, every time when you see the end, like, it usually says, like, the niece of time or, like, the bird sang as well. It took me a while to figure out that was the name of the chapters. Not the chapters, but kind of, like, the catchphrase of the chapter. Oh, okay. So, like, each one kind of representing, like, what that book represented, if anything, as well. Because, like, the, when I looked at the, um, when I looked at the titles of the books, they were completely different. Oh, okay. So I was like, okay, so it's not the name of the book. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, like, the first major one was, like, a niece in time. Yeah. Which was, um, Kirtanda, Kirtanda remembering one of her last conversations she had with a missing uncle, um, that made her, like, cry. And yeah. it really bothered her because she wanted to know exactly what had disturbed her so much. Yeah, and in honor of Hyoka, of anything, Danny and I will, like, give you all the clues that we pretty much saw in the show, but we will not reveal the, the answer to the mystery of anything. So, just like you guys, you pretty much have to be like Oreki and use your brain, use your noodles yeah. to figure out what the, what, the, what the answer was to the mystery. Also, so now I know I can't bring this up, but after you mentioning Hioka, I finally realized why you mentioned ice cream earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it took me a while. Just like in the manga, just like in the show, it took me a while to get the wordplay that was going on. I'm all like, I don't get... Oh... Dude, I know it's I know it's funny because in the because in the um because in the um, in the comment sections of when I was watching it, well, when they revealed like the like what the title meant and everything, like somebody was like it was a pun, a fucking pun. This whole time it was a pun, <laughs> a pun. Well, I mean, given not a lot of people like puns, I can get why it made seven year old Chitanda cry. <laughs> it was so awful. <laughs> it was a bad joke. Anyway, a really bad joke, actually. A really bad joke. But again, 
there's so much more to that. But basically, the main clues to that story is Chitanda had an uncle who went to India and went missing. And it was only this year that she, um, that the family just proclaimed him dead. We're about to proclaim him dead. We're about to pro- proclaim him dead. And, um, and Chitanda, because she was like the closest one to him, what, remembered this distinct memory of her talking to him that ended up disturbing him saying something that disturbed her to the point that made her cry and it was killing her and she knew when she saw um Hotoroki at play Hotaro um Hotaro thank you that when she saw um Hotaro at work and like how perceptive he was and how detailed he was she knew um that this is the person that's going to help me hopefully figure out this mystery. Oh, in the beginning of that freaking arc was such a tease because throughout this whole show, because like when she came, yeah. when, she invite, when she invited him to the cafe. She made it really obvious though. And even she was like, are you going to confess to me already or something? And, and she's just kind of like, you just kind of see her being bashful and everything. And uh, yeah. again, Danny, you weren't the only one that like disappointed by that ending. I would. <clears throat> Well, well, I mean, given I, I I get a relationship like Chitanda and Hotaro, like that's our main relationship. That that's gotta you know get pressed together. But like you know, typically I like if the side characters at least get together first. Like with um, I really liked how my love story played it, where they had. Um, oh, the two side characters, <laughs> that one girl in the girls group and that one guy in um, the the main guys group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How they ended up shacking up midway through the episode, midway through the series. Oh, um, season two, goddamn it! Madhouse, I just have to animate that one, <laughs> dude. I love that show so much as well. That's another. Ooh, that's another. That's a nice. That's a nice one to think about. That is a really nice one. I I, I love that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, going back to like the relationship aspect and everything as well, like. Is this like one of the other common things as well, aside from the detective stories, just these teases of like what these characters are, like how these characters interact and like are they interested in each other? Like what else is there beyond just like the friendship as well? Yeah, and I mean there's even an episode where they end up getting like locked in a basement. Not a basement, they get locked inside a storage shed. Yeah. And it's kind of like if you call for help and someone picks us up, this could cause a scandal with my family and I don't want that to happen. And so like little little things are out there where it's just like what where it's like she's thinking something that he's not thinking and he's thinking something that she isn't. And there's even that episode where he gets heat stroke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a very lewd heat stroke. Ooh. In the inn. <laughs> yeah, in the inn, like, he's in a bath and he's like, wait, is that Chitanda? And he's hearing, like, the, the water and, like, scrubbing and he's just imagining it all. And he passes out right then and there. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, he got overheated in the hot spring. Boy, and, like, they still didn't get why. Like, why? Not, not do they ever find out, but it's just like, well, that's embarrassing. And Chitanda wanted to kind of nurse her when he... And again, Chitanda's not a... She barely has anything, like, lady parts-wise. She barely has any boobs. She's pretty flat. But I do like how you just see that little crack of cleavage, that little crater of cleavage, and it's just like, no, please, um, go, uh, go and be with everyone else. I'm fine. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, and that's one of the things as well, like, when you're, like, again, it's just these little, like, these little blatant clues that they gave you that Orek is really taking an interest in, in her. Mm. Yeah, one of the person picking it up almost immediately is, um, is, uh, uh, fuck, I keep forgetting his name. Fukubei? Yeah, Fukubei, <laughs> who is immediately, like, you know, you've really been a little bit more proactive ever since Kitanda walked in your life. Yeah. And even... Him and the other girl, um, as soon as they stepped in, every time Tritanda would do the whole... I'll find I out her name. Okay. Every time uh, Tritanda would do that whole, I have to know, or, I'm curious, they would kind of get this look on their face like, yeah, we got him now. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, and that's the thing as well. It's like pretty much like later on in the series, like they pretty much get a good grasp on how to handle Oreki and like get him to like pretty much help out with mysteries as well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because a lot of the things as well... Ibarra, Mayaka. Ibarra, there we go. There, I think, I think there was an actual episode named after her. That's why. Yes. Um, why didn't you ask Iba? Yeah. 
the the movie one. Mm-hmm. But um, also, again, we're not gonna spoil any of the mysteries. But there is a character in there that I do not care how sweet they made her afterwards. I hated the Empress. I hated her. That was really fucked up. I and even when they tried to kind of be like, oh, I won't manipulate you again, like in the last episode. I'm like, so go fuck yourself. I don't know. She kind of was. She she kind of. <laughs> Confession time. I actually kind of had a thing for her. Mmm, dude. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a quick um thing. I might do this every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna open up uh, a quick little segment called "Is the Hentai." <clears throat> yes, there is. He- in fact, Hioka Hentai. What? Yes, there is a lot of it. You know, what? you have your Chitanda, you have your Iba. Um, no, I. Th- I think maybe I saw one yeah, yaoi one, maybe, but there is a lot, and I mean a lot of the Empress. That's oh, actually how I found out the character, because within the first six episodes, I already looked up, like, is the hentai of the show, and that's <laughs> oh how I God. knew that this character was coming, because there was a hentai starring her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so God. Yes, there is Hyoka hentai. Oh god, no, my image of that show is ruined now. <laughs> I forgot to warn you, Danny. Whenever there's a show that I really like, I always make it taboo to look hentai off of it. Only because afterwards it just ruins the character for me. Really? Because that that's that's my method of looking for hentai when I really like this show. Can I see the characters get fucked? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no! <laughs> They're in high school! Oh, come on, they're over 16. What's wrong is Miss Kobe is the hen... Quick segment from Miss Kobayashi. There is Miss Kobayashi hentai, but I swear to God, 70% of it is Connor. Oh, God. It, that's just wrong. I, I don't care if she's 100 years old. She is still a little baby seven-year-old. So go fuck yourself, hentai community, for that one. <laughs> Uh, but I'll, I'll do that every now and then. I'll probably do that every now and then. Maybe not for every show. Now I know not to do it with shows that you really like, so I probably won't do it for Lewis Choices. <laughs> yeah, because I always make it taboo, only because at that point, if I like, if I look at it as fat material, like I see them like, God, but now I know who the character is. Like It's kind of like looking like, for me, it feels like staring a person straight in the eye and jacking off to them like that. <laughs> It's just awkward at that point. It's just <laughs> like looking them straight in the eye and just going like here, pat, 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 pat. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's the thing with me. Um, <laughs> I a, little, a little preview for the next hentai episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> basically, we'll be talking about all the hentais that shows Lewis life. Oh, <laughs> no, um, disclaimer. 100% honesty for me, I didn't really open any of them. I just really wanted to see if there was any. And yeah, I'm just like, okay, so a lot of it is just... Uh, I would have looked at, in all honesty, I would have looked at it if it was Yaoi. But there was not a single Yaoi one. Why? Because I, again, I kind of had a, a thing Lewis had. I didn't want to see these cute little characters get plowed. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't click any of them, but I'm like, oh, look, there's a girl I don't recognize. Um, there's, there's Eva and, um, th- there's Eva and Chitanda being tag teamed. Oh God. <laughs> but, but yes, uh, there, there's some pretty loose shit going on. But yeah, with, with the Empress, it's like, she is a, she is a really like interesting character and really sweet, but they even bring it up almost immediately. She's highly manipulative. Oh yeah. No, pretty much because like, especially when you see like those little bits, again, the show does this every time where it gives you like little bits before they introduce you a character where like they show you like kind of like either like monologues or like just previous conversations happening to kind of give you an idea of what the character might end up being. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it comes up with all the mysteries as well. Like I feel like if anything, like this would be a good point to like start talking about the first mystery and kind of giving the first clue about Chitana's uncle, Sekitane Jun. Yes. So a lot of the times you hear when you hear about like Seki Tani June and everything through the classic club and everything, like you barely hear like any like little bits of information at first. So a lot of the times like you just think you're, you're just thinking of anything, like they're just talking about like, alright, what time period does Seki Tani June live in? And like why do people like recognize them as like, you know, as a as a, like um as a famous person like in um in um in the anthologies as well. Right, because they were the, one of the things were they knew 
Um, he was also in classic literature, which is what brought Chitanda to it. And they knew one of the keys to it was looking for the 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 anthologies, which was being guarded by a, another, which was in a room of a, a guy. Um, what was it? The Wall Newspaper Club. Yeah. I knew it wasn't just the Newspaper Club. It was a weird name. The Wall <laughs> Newspaper Club. Um, who was secretly smoking in the classroom and, Dude, you know. I know, man. Dude, when, when Oreki saw that, I was like, holy shit, man. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, I don't know how this... But, but like, I would have noticed the smell of the perfume, but I wouldn't have thought twice about it. Yeah, exactly. I, I just, but then it would kind of wonder what he was doing because why do you smell perfume? And why were the windows wide open? Yeah. Why was the, why was he not wearing his jacket? Why was the fan aiming at it? But not, not just that, sorry. It's also the fact that he almost immediately had a very defensive attitude about him. And there were two things going through my mind. He 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 probably spilled something that made a smell in the classroom because you know like newspaper stuff, or he ripped off a nasty fart. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, my dog. I I swear to God, it was he the farted or he spilled paint thinner or something. Mm-hmm. Um, paint thinner that they were gonna have to pay for or something. I, for no no reason, suspected that he would be smoking on the school grounds because that's never a thing they talk about in, like, anime shows. There's almost never anyone smoking in campus. Um, real life. On the campus? Yeah. I don't remember that at all. It was, I think it was one of the OVAs where, where they won. That's why. <laughs> no, okay. I haven't seen the OVAs. Um, but we will one day because... God, you know how much I love that show. That is one that I will actually never do a, is the hentai because I don't want to look it up. I know, I'm scared. And, and that show is just a roller coaster of emotions, so you kind of have to pay respect to the characters. Yeah. But yeah, and where were we? Oh yeah, Seki Tani June. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. Looking for the anthologies and everything, which was hidden like by by the um, by the by the wall newspaper club. Yeah, really well hidden too. <laughs> like basically hiding it under a makeshift table. That was a that was a really good idea. Um, mm-hmm. But when they find it, they start flipping through the one that was within his school year, where they are just saying this guy was a hero. Oh yeah. But then they opened up. I think the one after it, like the no, year after the one they found. That's the one they were reading. The one after it because the the thing they were having trouble was looking for the original one that started the one exactly when he got um, when he was deemed a hero. So was it the so which was the one they were reading where it was the girl saying that he wasn't a stoic hero, he was a tragic hero? The forty fourth. The forty fourth one. No, um no, it called him they called him um yeah, the tragic hero there was the forty fourth anthology which was like um which was forty four years ago, the year after he um and the year after um he became a hero. Oh okay, yeah, because it um, it was another one that originally was like, this dude was like a hero, you know, mm-hmm. he, he stood up for the school when no one would, and of course, there was another person, should we reveal the person or no? Which one? The person who wrote the tragic hero thing, no? Not yet, not until, not until, not until we come to the part later on. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but yeah, so, th- so one of the things is that now they're trying to figure out, well, what happened, what did he do? And, is uh, it related to what he told Chitanda? Yeah. So, yeah, go. Because I don't really know. Oh. I'm dancing on eight shows here. <laughs> I don't know how far we should go. Um, it's okay. I'll put some, I'll put some, I'll put some, some OST for this one. Oh, okay. But yeah, but just to get kind of started with anything. So, <clears throat> Pretty much right off the bat, when they try, well, once they find, once they find out just like why there's like so like mis- much mystery and um, why my second Titan June in the first place is such a celebrated like member of the club, it kind of raises a curiosity not only for um for Chitanda but also like the rest of everybody else as well, because like everybody at this point is trying to think like you know like theories as like what happened and like Fukube said, like <clears throat> like in order for him to be in a tragic year, like it couldn't have been it couldn't have been anything regarding violence. Yeah. Because this was the time during where students like were more into like activism and demonstrations rather than like, you know, like destroying like um destroying property and everything. Mm-hmm. And I love that because like he described it as being like, you know, the sixties being a time where like um where like Japan was like actually like experiencing like a lot of like especially students were experiencing like trying to get a lot of movements to go and everything. Mm-hmm. And um 
What, and one of the things they were able to figure out is whatever happened had to do with a... It wasn't the cultural festival, was it? Yeah. Oh, the cultural festival? Okay, because there was that whole thing where they said now the cultural festival was three days, but when their cultural festival rolled around, it was like a week. Yep. Okay, so it was one of those... It, it was five that was going to be cut down to two, and then would later just be turned to three so his sacrifice was kind of a semi-rainful one yeah <laughs> god damn this show and, and, and again no we still don't know what's up with this character what? got it oh perfect <laughs> yeah so now we are real detectives and and we have on guard uh, imagery going on around us, but you guys can't <laughs> see that part. Exactly. It's really weird. But suddenly we're in a gray room full of mannequins with the names of characters around them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. But pretty much like when, in order to get this mystery started, is one of the key things that I've already noticed is that pretty much they claim them as a hero starting around like the June area, which is pretty much when the festival starts. Yeah. But they noted that pretty much one of the things that happened is that he got expelled around the October area. Yes. Which meant that he couldn't have done something violent to get him immediately expelled. So that, that, that like ruled out a complete like the theory that like, you know, like something violent happened or anything. Mm-hmm. And um, so they knew one of the best clues would be to look for the person who called him a tragic hero. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is that the person's name of course, was a her surname was different. I think maiden name. It was Ma a maiden name. Maiden name. Um, her maiden name was different, but you know, um, uh, um, Hotaro, there we go. Being the smart little bean he was, basically found out that oh, it's the school librarian. Yep. And this is pretty much done after like he realized that his theory that he proposed to Chitanda earlier was incomplete. Yes. Because although he was on the right track. When his sister called him and, said, and called him like the kind hero or like and, and everything like that as well, uh, and, and like even saying a oh, poor kid too. Yeah, poor kid and saying that like why why the why the name Kanye Festival was a taboo and everything, it made Hotara realize that his theory is pretty much um not there yet. Yeah. Hence, looking up the librarian and everything, who was the one who pretty much wrote the, the wrote the um, the piece on Kyoka. Yeah. And <clears throat> a lot of it that's being explained as well. You got to think about the clues. And we'll give you the clues right now, but we won't spoil what they figured out about it. Yeah, so whip out your handy dandy notebook, <laughs> kids. <laughs> you know what's weird? I, I could have sworn I went I went to last AX, someone was selling like replica replicas of the handy dandy notebook. <laughs> and I'm just like, is that still a thing? What the <laughs> fuck? Okay. But yeah. And pretty, yeah, oh my god, man, now I wish I was there. I know. I, I almost wanted to buy one, but I'm like, nine bucks? Ooh, no. <laughs> no, never mind. The pricing is just a turn off. Yeah. But yeah, and just thinking about everything as well, so think about the clues we currently have. We know that pretty much like Itani Jun was named a hero around the time when the festival was, was coming around, uh, around the time when the festival was being deemed that it was um, going to be shortened to three days rather than five days. Yeah. But he didn't get expelled immediately for his action until the festival was over October 31st. Yes. To which then he was pretty much, he pretty much like, he was like the only one who got expelled from that movement as well. And everybody pretty much deemed him a tragic hero. Mm -hmm. And the things that we know so far is that there had to be some kind of movement or something regarding as to why he got like take the fall and everything as well. And why it was only him for such a big movement. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and more importantly, just the meaning behind the, mean, the meaning behind the um, Hyoka. Which roughly translated, um, roughly translated to English is frozen dessert, but to give it a more modern sense, you think of it as ice cream. Yes. And that's as far as I'm gonna go, <laughs> just because after that you you figure you figure out exactly what happened to what is it exactly that happened and why it made him such a tragic person. Yes. So moving on to the next one. Yep. Which is called Why didn't she just ask Eva? Yep. So basically, um, Chitanda is Chitanda is basically asked by her unknown friend at the time. No, is no, you're good. Is basically asked by her unknown friend at the time if they would like to watch a movie and go through it. So the club, you know, initially thinking they just want to show us a movie and give give them some feedback, they're shown this 
awful. <laughs> yeah. Awful. It's like hor- <laughs> horrifically acted like student film. Uh, but uh, it, it is flat out like wonky con- camera movement, mediocre camera angles. And, and, and kind of awkward, awkward um, voices. Yeah. Uh, a- awkward, uh, um, awkward voices and acting that would just make like... Tommy Wiseau be like, that's Oscar worthy. <laughs> <laughs> but like, seriously, I, I don't know how it was in the Japanese one, but like when they went into that room and showed that guy dead, literally the dub actor scream was just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much like that in the Japanese job. Like when they, when they went there and she was like, Kya! A dead body! <laughs> oh, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was horrible. But basically, um, uh, basically the it was about these people going to this old hotel, realizing that the hotel is unlivable, going into one of the rooms and realizing that one of the senpais was murdered. Yeah, pretty horrifically too. Went into the room, he was dead, and his arm was even chopped off. Yep. Um, but. The movie just stopped there. So um, we are then introduced to God. What was that? It wasn't Ibisu, was it? I think it is Ibisu. Ibisu senpai. But I'll double check. But we're introduced to another character um, who is within like the the prestigious group, not family, but like the prestigious. Ibisu. Um, Ibisu. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're um, introduced to that character who is within the same kind of fancy background that Chitanda is in, except she very much like wears it on a sleeve and is known for being like highly manipulative and is able to get every anyone to do her bidding. Um, but she is basically the person producing the movie, right? She wasn't directing it. No, she was pretty much just like left in charge for a bit after like um, after the original one, um, the original like person who was in charge of the project. Um, that's it for her to like pretty much figure out what to do with the script. Yes. So basically, um, she said, what I really brought you guys here is I want you to tell me who do you think committed the murder? Because our original script writer, before she can finish it, got sick and was unable to do anything else with it. So now um, we are at a loss and need to figure out what happens next. Mm-hmm. Um, and they give them, like, all the clues, like, um, well, should we go for that? First? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can, I think it's pretty much safe right now. Just because, again, just like how, how they, just how, like, they were introduced with all the clues. I was like, for me, that, that's pretty much, like, what's spending the whole time. It's like, it was, like, kind of like one of those, like, murder, murder stories you tell, like, at night and everything. Like, all right, who was it? Who done it? Was it the butler, the butcher, or who? Yeah, so... Basically, the clues we are given up is the fact that this was a passion. Um, this is a script that said scriptwriter really wanted to do, so it was mm-hmm. a little odd that uh, just a, a sickness. Um, and given from what we are given, it was a flu that kind of gave that kind of made her like unable to do the script. But if she was that passionate, even to the point of going to the place where they were filming and then writing a story around the place. We know that she is very um, passionate about the project, so why would she just stop the script there? Mm -hmm. Another clue we are given is the fact that a seventh actor was supposed to be... um, that They were auditioning for a potential seventh actor. Found his sister. Really? Is that what she's supposed to look like? Yes. Aww. Wait, it's just his face. Ah! (laughs) It's just his face. I'm (laughs) sorry. That's so good looking, though. (laughs) <laughs> no, this is pretty much where people were able to piece together from like all the snippets of like, what they saw. But didn't she have like... Her, I don't think the top of her hair would be like that because she had a braid. Exactly. Because like we pretty much just see like these snippets and everything from her the whole series. That's our next yoga mystery party, people! <laughs> <laughs> just how to find out how his sister looks like. Because now I'm curious. Kininarimasu! <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Um, um, what was another one? Oh, the props director, the script writer also asked the props master to look for some sturdy string strong enough to hold a person. Yep. And, um, and another thing, another really big thing, because again, we talked about that there was a grizzling murder in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, she had initially asked the script master for, oh, just like a little 
cork, not even a pint, but like a little cork of blood. He didn't need it big, but he ended up buying like a water bottle's worth of blood. Yeah. And ended up using all of it. Um, and, um, and the detectives, who, which was just people involved in the movie, were giving their take of what they think the movie was supposed to be. Um, the killer was supposed to be this guy, and he came in through the window, killed him, and crawled out the window. Um, or it was supposed to be a bloody slasher film, so it was going to start with that murder and then whittle down. Yeah. So it was basically up to, um, it, it was basically up to, um, um, uh, sorry, Hotoro, why am I so bad with these names? But it's basically up to him to, uh, figure out the murder, and, um, Irisu was able to weave him around and get him to the point where he was like, oh, I'll solve, I'll solve the mystery. But one of the big problems that happened is all the people, um, Chitanda, um, Iba, and um, uh, Fukube, they weren't there to give him input. Yeah. So, yes. Is, should we stop there? I think that would be good enough for that, because like, pretty much after that, at least in my opinion, I feel like it'll, like it'll kind of like show exactly what's behind the scenes as to what's going on afterwards. Yes. Because at that point, you realize what he's just trying to do. Yeah, and also I feel like even if we kind of give his conclusion, that still would be bad. Yeah. Yeah. So we so we gave you the little clips there. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like any other good murder story in anything, this one's actually like for you to like actually think about what they went through as well. Yeah. Just getting behind like the little dissections of what they do for it. Yeah. And, and again, this was like my second. Fa- no, no, this was my favorite mystery in the in the anime, and then the next one coming up was my second favorite. Yeah. All right, then, so let's move on to the next one. Yeah, because just like every good anime, we have to go to a school festival. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that was a good one. It was. So set us off there, since I took the reins on this episode, on the last mystery. Mm-hmm. So pretty much once I'm pretty much done with like that whole mystery of the movie and everything, now we're pretty much approaching like the deadline for the Kanye for the Kanye school festival. Oh, since that's taboo and the <laughs> since that's taboo for the club, another mystery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Kamiya High School Festival, pretty much it's up to them now to like not only like develop their anthology but actually get to sell it as well. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that's pretty much like you get to see in the school festival and everything is just seeing how everybody else is preparing for it and everything. Not only like well, not only like the classic literature club, but even like Eva and um, with the manga society, manga, manga, manga. Yeah, manga. Please don't say manga. People get legitimately mad when you say that. Manga. <laughs> Man, I used to say that all the time. Literally, when I stopped was 2016, because I had a manager who, she wasn't a weeb, but she just studied Japanese, mm-hmm. and she told me, like, she really appreciated the fact that I said manga <laughs> rather than manga, because so many, like, th- this is literally how she said it, so many people get it wrong. Like, she was mad. She was like, I keep telling people it's not manga. Well... For me, the only reason why I say manga and not manga is because in Spanish, manga means sleeve. Sleeve? Sleeve. Sleeve. Huh. So... <laughs> I got a pun coming! <laughs> I wear my jacket inside out. Look, it's a Japanese manga now, because it's reverse. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like any good pun, it's bad. I don't even know where you were going with that, mm. to be honest. Because manga is reverse, then No, reverse. I know, but like at the beginning I'm saying I just didn't know where you were going with that. Yeah, it's a really weird stretch. Anyway, keep going! I want you to take the reins on this one and then I'll take the reins on the last one. Even though the last one, the, the, actually it's more of a collection of mysteries rather than like an overarching one. Oh yeah, because a lot of the thing and everything, ah, I'm still trying to figure out what, it, um, what, the, what the term for it was. Wait, what term? The, the term that you use and everything when you trade one thing and then eventually trade it to like get enough to get rich eventually. Oh, fuck. Man, I, and I forgot what was the episode he talked about it too, or else I'd go right now and look it up. But, okay, I, I, I'll start it off a little bit. So, one of the problems that arose was um, um, Eba. Um, Eba basically ended up ordering too many copies 
of the anthology. They were initially only supposed to print out about 30 because they understood it probably wouldn't have sold that much. Yeah. But they ended up, um, they, she ended up accidentally ordering 200 and they still need to pay the printers back Mm -hmm. for that. So they had to sell out or at least sell enough that it wouldn't hurt the budget too bad. So basically how, how the things go up is they are now all 200 and they would end up with 200 copies instead of 30 copies yeah i was reading i'm reading up right now like how many copies it was because i know that was like important for what how how um how it was as well yeah and the thing behind this because this is actually one of the few times you actually get to see oreki's sister come there physically in person yeah she, she was there like in the opening um in, in the opening of the series yep um but she was just sitting down and he was saying she was saying like I'll probably be there later and he's like no please don't because even though his sister is loving she's also a bit of a troll and rambunctious yeah so it it really annoys him when she's around like like skipping past this arc real quick I love when she <laughs> I love when she gave him Valentine's chocolate oh. and it's like here's a get here, here's a token of a token to my little brother out of dot 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 sympathy and he just like kicks the box out of the room <laughs> <laughs> oh but that was a sad episode too yeah that was a really sad episode <laughs> but again we have little gems like that to not make it a complete disaster yeah <laughs> so um it, it was one of the first ones that we actually see her and what me and Lewis were talking about a few minutes earlier was the, this is the one where we actually get shots of a head um, shots of her neck, like at certain angles, but we never see the eyes and never see the top. So they pretty much censor her, just like they censored Aradagi's mother. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> true. Or or like the sister in um in uh, again mentioned earlier, silent voice. Yeah. Because we get like the remember when we were I know I talked about it with you and Ben but like I know when I was talking about it on the old and amazing episodes um I was saying initially I thought that the sister had been raped by the big Brazilian guy oh because you just see him go in the room and the guy's lifting up like what's up and you just see the sister's feet just laying on the floor but then I later learned oh wait that was just a tactic not to actually show the sister for some reason <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Brazilian guy. Well, after she dumped the other guy. Yeah. The one who kept bullying him. The one who kept punching at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the one that had a a bully that uh, the one where his little brother was a bully to him, and then when he stood up, the guy beat him up in retaliation. Yeah. And then the Brazilian guy comes in and like you, you know. know. The reason why she dated him is like so like the guy doesn't pick on him anymore. Yeah, <laughs> D- dated him for like uh, dated him for insurance for the family, but then you know actually had a daughter with him. Yeah, one <laughs> of the most adorable daughters. I know. So one of the so um one oh, of the things thing. back into regards of this, I know it's like we'll, we'll get to that. My friends probably just like just shut up and wait for the other. Just wait to actually do the episode. You're gonna have to wait a few months <laughs> because I have plans after this. There is a backlog of things they have to do after me. So anyway, no, don't tell me we're gonna review the hentai for for Hyoka. No, I said we weren't gonna do that. Okay. We'll do that when hentai month actually rolls around. What what is hentai month? We don't have hentai. We'll have a hentai month, but it's never like because I think the first hentai month was like in February. We did it ironically oh, yeah. around Fe- Valentine's that's Day. That's true, that's true. We, that's like, that was our pun. Yeah, so, yeah, um, so eh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably do it by the end of the year, or maybe even after Anime Expo. Maybe we'll do it at, maybe we'll even do it during, uh, during or uh, before or after Crunchyroll. I think Crunchyroll Expo, uh, the week of Crunchyroll Expo week will kind of be a little vacation for us or something. Unless something really cool goes down, then we can just record it in the uh, in the hotel. Yeah. I will bring my equipment because you you never know. I'm just kind of saying what we might not do a full fledged show, but I might do something. Yeah, just a little tidbit. Yeah. So, so basically, back to the show. Um, so basically, the plan is okay. So we have to go around and basically plug the anthology. Um, go, uh, Chitanda, go and see if any clubs will be willing to sell copies. Um, and then 
I'm gonna and and, and this is um a Fuku a Fukube yes uh Fukube I'm saying this saying like and then I'm gonna go around compete and win and then plug <laughs> and then plug our show and um and Hotoro is just flat out like you just want to play. <laughs> That's all you want to do. Yep. And just to kind of just like get um get um get the like not only the anthology name out there, but this is kind of where you start seeing like all these other little mysteries like just appearing out of like out of the Kanji Festival as well. Because like when Fukube is pretty much there during the quiz show, he meets with an old friend from the Go Club. Yeah. Which for all you guys, which for all you. What know, is that? Yeah. What is that? Go. You have ever played it before? No. It's the one with like the red and black stones and everything. Where like you pretty much keep putting stones until like you have more. You have more stones than your opponent, or you pretty much complete the um 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 saturate the, um saturate the whole board. Oh, I didn't know that. So what were you saying? Were you gonna explain it to them too when you were doing oh, this? Oh, for all the non weaves, go as go as weave weave checkers. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. That actually makes sense then. Yeah. So, who for some reason just made this like fake rivalry with him. And the point was just like, it's like every anime you see. I am your self-proclaimed rival. What do you have against me? <laughs> like, um, be, because like I'm watching One Punch Man again, it very much is like, uh, Speed of Sound Sonic was like, yeah, my arch never to screw you again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I'm reading the episode cap right now. Like, um, the thing that's coming about every, uh, all the thieves, well, all the things is like, there's always a note left. It's like that with the name Jumonji. Yeah. And, um, Jumonji. That, that's all I could think about. I'm like, hey, I like that movie too. Well, actually, this is before in um, um, Into the Jungle, I think it was called, the yeah. second movie. I'm not a big fan of the first movie, but I love that second movie. The second movie's so good. I agree with you. Um, but but it, apparently there's going to be a third one. I'm really curious how they're going to do that. So, in this um, series, my bad. Um, Arc arc in this arc um so a actually no it, it, it's funny that that was Fukube's idea was to like con like compete in things and like plug the show because Coco did that for us yeah yeah um two I think it was 20 sorry my bad it was 2017 um he competed in that stand-up contest it was a, a stand-up comedy contest and he I think he was like the second runner up but he said that he plugged our show big time, and when people were congratulating him, he was plugging Danny and the Electric Fox and like the podcast all together. So I kid you not, around the time that happened, we had like a twenty-one subscriber increase. Ooh, all right. Now I know what to do for now I know what to do for Crunchy Rolex School. Right. Hey, there's like a Mate versus Butler event over there. Seriously. Look, just get some foam swords and some foam weapons and actually someone organized a legit tournament arc. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. um, well, shit, what was that thing in Kingdom Hearts 2? You won't know what I'm talking about, but there's this thing in Kingdom Hearts 2 called Struggle, where they put a bunch of these, like, um, velvet, velcro balls on people, and they have to, like, knock them out, so... Before the timer runs out, they would be like, okay, well, how many did you get? How many balls are on you and how much do you have? So, like, if you have more balls on your body than your component, then you win. Ooh. So, like, do a tournament arc like that. <laughs> well, like, I, I seriously do want one of these anime competitions to, anime conventions to actually host a tournament arc. But, like, a safe one. Not an actual martial arts one because I swear to God someone will have some broken bones. <laughs> but, like, foam weapons, people. Dude, I, I'll tell you like an idea I've had for it, but like after the show, just because like, I feel like if anything, I might go off tangent. Uh, I, I know for sure I'm going to go off tangent. And, oh, <laughs> hey now. No, um. No, yeah, my bones are popping out. Yeah, careful. I hate that feeling. So, anyway guys, yeah, we had that done with us before. And you know, it, it, it kind of worked. Like, if there's one thing Fukube could do, he could wild up an audience like no one's business. Mm -hmm. Like when they went to... <laughs> I actually love this. They had a quiz club. I'm like, so is this a quiz club where it's just people, you know, quizzing each other all the time? <laughs> I've actually never heard of that concept of a club. But, you know, it's, he goes to the quiz club's event, which is a quiz show. And he ends up, like, basically, ba basically, basically wilding people up, like, being like, yeah, we even found the meaning to the Kanye Fester's name. 
But if you want to find out what it is, you got to read our book. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like, he was so effective that even I wanted to read this fictional book, even though I already know all those answers. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he has this guy who's just like, oh, so we're at a tie. Well, well, what are you going to do next? Well, I was thinking of doing the cooking festival, then I'll see you at the cooking competition. <laughs> um, which he then gets like, the, the, the kid from the Go Club gets like a, a guy who's, his dad was a chef, but I still think was just a professional chef he hired because Jesus Christ, I didn't look like a student. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny thing as well. I'm glad I'm not the only one who thought about that. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was just like, dude, no, that is not a student. You, you hired a baby face chef or something. You hired a chef that people are dumb enough to think was a like, was a kid, but, um, uh, but, but, so, um, Otoro, though, on his side, <laughs> he flat out even points this out, too. He's all like, wait, this is my chance. Um, if you guys are gonna go and try to sell the books, I guess I'll be here and, you know, hold the fort down. Yeah. But what I find really funny is this is, this, all this is happening like in episode 12 or 13, 15 maybe? Yeah, 12 to 15, because that's pretty much when they're like, not only like, you see everybody entering the competitions and everything, but you get that thing that I tried mentioning earlier where like, you know, you get the straw and then eventually trading up and everything. Because mm -hmm. the first item that's left on, on, on Oreki's desk it's pretty much a fountain pen that his sister like brought to the festival. Yeah, like a broken fountain pen. Oh yeah, it was broken. <laughs> yeah. And um and basically this guy from um the fashion club rolls in, punk rocker dude. Which I don't know how they did him in the sub, but like in the dub they just made him sound like a stoner <laughs> because of punk rock dude. But he comes in basically like, oh man, I needed the, a pen. I was I needed something to look cool in my like um, breast pocket. Do you mind if I take it? And it's like, yeah, sure. No, it was like, oh well, you can have it. He's like, oh really? Here, um, here's a VIP pass, which was like a piece of paper with a bobby pin. Yeah. Uh, you put this, you bring bring it in, and we'll hook you up and like, you know, give you, I think it was like, give you a makeover, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, then that later translates to a, again, this is weird. This is like the gardening club. And they were making roasted potatoes, but the guy comes in with like an AK-47 and a pistol and he's like, oh no, no, these are just water guns, this is how we put out the fires. Oh yeah! Like, that is so fucking impractical. <laughs> Dude, when I first saw it, I was like, I was like mm, really now? Yeah. I was like, no, I didn't expect this school to allow weapons. That's what I was thinking. And I'm like, what kind of, what kind of person makes a water gun that's an AK-47? Because that looks like it can't hold a whole lot in there. Oh, <laughs> um, that was so, so stupid. That was that was really weird. I <laughs> there was probably some translating thing that I think they had to kind of skip around to get that to work. Probably. Um, but um, like, why not a war reenactment club or like a battle enthusiast uh -huh. club, something like that? Yeah. <laughs> but um. Get gardening club really but it, it again it, it was weird when you had to uh more more or less like he's given that gun and these two what were those girls from they were two girls in pumpkin costumes running around sugar treating yeah and i don't remember exactly where they were but like the thing with them the thing with them is that they pretty much um were handing out cookies yeah yeah so he said, uh, give me two bags of cookies and I'll give you the water gun. And they ended up giving him like a bag of flour. Yeah. Um, and then the bag of flour then translated to a little mirror and the mirror would then translate to a dojin. No, wasn't the bag of flour used during the cooking episode? Yes. So, but that was the thing. He gave, um, he gave, um, Iba the flour. And then when she thanked him, he said, now give me something in return. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he explains it, and she's like, oh, okay, well, I'll give you this. Um, uh, the mango, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, no, it was the mirror. Oh, yeah, the mirror. Yeah, it was a mirror because he made that joke about, like, oh, is this with their cosplay? And she ended up, like, hitting him for it. <laughs> um, and then the mirror was, like the scene by the sister, and the sister kind of wanted in on that like weird thing he was doing, so she's like, all right, I'll give you this, uh, for the mirror, I'll give you this, and she ends up handing him this mirror that um, 
Eva was looking for. Yeah. Because going to Eva... Oh, wait. No, I wanted to say this before we did move on to that. One of the interesting things I was noticing about uh, about um, Hotaro was he was getting bored up there. Yeah. And you'd think with someone who's all about energy conservation, he'd be like, oh, this is great. I'm reading and stuff. But he was getting bored and was spending most of his time peeping out the window to see what, like, people were doing. And I have a feeling that he probably... that probably would have played out a whole lot differently if he didn't meet Kitanda. Oh, yeah. This is already that point where we're starting to see her effect on him. Oh, especially when he, like, did his participation with the, um, with the flower and everything to make sure that they were able to, like, win that, um, cooking competition. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I was like, mm-hmm. for me, that was one of the best... One of the... One of the best ways to just show how, like, what, what Oreki was going with the, with the whole thing and everything. Yeah, but, but the thing with, like, that cooking contest, I was even getting mad at Shitanda. I'm like, you're only supposed to cook, like, th- this is an entree, but you might as well be cooking the appetizer entree and then the freaking dessert because you're using too many in- ingredients, <laughs> even to the point where they had to point it out, like, uh, classic lit club, you might want to slow down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, thankfully, um, thankfully, um, Hotoro came through and there was no violation for that. Apparently. Uh, dude, I thought that dubious. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if maybe you guys felt bad for them <laughs> or you wanted to see where this was going, but I do have a feeling that might have been a bit of a violation in the rules. But, um, so moving on to Iba, which... As a person who went to the Glendale, Cal- <laughs> the Glendale Community College mo- anime club, I could I could relate to her all <laughs> relate to her completely, because what Eva's going through is Eva does feel bad about the manga thing, but there's not really a whole lot of things. Sorry, the anthology. But yeah. There's not really a lot she can do right now because right now for her manga club. They have to sell a booklet of 100 manga reviews, which is a good idea, but I think it would have kind of been better if it was an anthology of manga. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like... uh, Because if it wasn't for how much of, like, a jerk that girl was being, I would have 100% agreed with her. I'm like... Uh, I'm like, yeah, it, it is very unnecessary. Wait, what are you saying about manga? <laughs> oh, fuck you, bitch! I know. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> and, but um, because again, that was the kind of shit that was happening in that um, manga club. I that anime club I went to. We had a guy there who we swear was only there to kill. Yeah. Like, he claimed he was... Oh, you... Right, you know who I'm talking about. He was there always posting on the official Facebook page, I don't know why people make such a big deal about manga. And I had to step in and basically be like, you do realize manga is a subjective uh, art form, right? No, anime is a subjective art form. There could be people who look at American shows and be like, well, I don't get the point of this either. And even... um, after that, even he was like, you like, like, uh, yeah, like he didn't know what to say because it's like, you know, I'm right. Like, you know, I don't know what the hell he was doing in that mm-hmm. class, but he was at a cost travel. Um, and He's pretty much become an SJW at this break. Th- dude, after I, I forgot what he said. It wasn't no SJW thing. I think it was him bashing a game I was excited for, but I like removed him from Facebook and I remember getting like a getting a Facebook post from him wanting to be involved in the podcast. And I'm like, this is the dude who told me that he got his podcast shut down because he was bashing the furry community. I'm not going to have him come in and cause some trouble for us. Um, but, but yeah, like, I've had shit like that happen to me. Oh, yeah. So when, when you saw, like, the Magic Society and everything like that as well, it kind of goes to... And this is the thing as well that you see a lot of with clubs when it comes to high schools and everything... Oh, this is the reason why I love Slice with Lives mm-hmm. in general. So, like, for me, because you get to see both aspects of, like, what you see, like, not only, like, of school life and everything, but, like, club life as well, like, the social aspects. Because mm-hmm. when you watch, like, other shows that like, only show, like, club lives or, like, the, on the surface and everything, you think, like, oh, they're probably having a lot of fun and everything. But once you dive into, like, Slice of Lives, whether it's, like, you know, Hyoka or Martin Romantic Comedy Snafu, yeah. that one will always be, like, my top one as well. Mm-hmm. You get to see, like, both sides of what happens in the club. Like, yeah, they do have their good times, 
but you can't have the good times without the bad times as well and kind of like figuring out what to do with certain people. Yeah. You know what this club needed though? They needed the anime guitar statement where their world was being torn apart by anime. <laughs> Crossing over into the real world. You know, I don't know if I ever... Re- I, I think I posted our review for it, but I don't know if I posted me and Ben's. But I really do... I really do gotta go back on my road. I fucking loved that show. <laughs> like, I know when I did it with you, I'm like... When me and Ben did it, I was super harsh on it, too. Like, he was, but then when I did it with you, I'm like, no, there were bits I liked about it. And then now I'm just like, dude, I fucking love that show. I don't care. I love that show. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. But, but yeah, it's like, that. that's what those girls needed. They needed a freaking reality check. But it was really, it, you know, it was really sad, her walking in with, like, cosplay and almost immediately one of the head girls all, like, all, like, criticizing the fact that she didn't get a specific... Um, shoes that match the character. Yeah. And then the other girls back there who are dressed up as Vocaloids are like, oh, it's so she did end up dressed up after all, after all that first that she made. Yeah, she should have just kept her mouth shut and listened when, like, they told her in the first place. And oh, like, dude, yeah. Says, dude, when I saw that, I was like, hey, Maika has her bits too, but don't treat her like that. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was Maika her name? Or who was Maika again? Eva. Eva. That's why I that's why I didn't recognize the name Mayaka. Okay, I I now one hundred percent can go with that. Eva Mayaka. Yeah, so um yeah, my Ma- 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 had her issues, of course. And even even one of the big things going down was <laughs> and again it, it did kind of correspond to a joke, but one of the things going down was um uh, Fukube told her, told her to try to go through the entire festival without causing a scene because he knows how much of a little scrapper she is. So she ends up um, getting into an argument with like the head girl. And it's even funny because the club was kind of ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> they put out a sign saying Battle of the Maidens, but then they took it down when the fight like had like blown away. <laughs> but it, yeah, it is like... Like, um, again, stuff like that happens in these clubs, and I really did not appreciate seeing how they were so messing with her, because yeah. one of the things that play really big into the overall mystery is there's this manga that Mayuka really likes called... It was a doujin uh, that Mayuka really liked called A Corpse by Midnight or something. Yeah. Yeah, A, a Corpse by Midnight. And... She ends up, like, saying, I'm going to bring it to you, and you're going to read it, and I want you to read it, and still tell me what you told me right now. And she, and, and just to point it out, I don't think we're going to reveal that much, but there was a little detail that at first I thought they were just going to completely blow over, was the fact that she was holding up this other manga what, what, from what looked like, it looked like an Astro Boy type manga. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said, like, well, if I can't find a corpse by midnight, I guess I can just show her this. But, oh. you know, it's like a step below that. And then they end up kind of, <laughs> they end up kind of revealing something about that that I'm just like, oh, fuck, that's hard. <laughs> um, Not my yeah, man. And, dude, and if you're wondering, like, if, like why, if, like, how, like, when some chaotic explained the Kanye festival, that's literally how this whole, this, this, it was just one mystery after another and everything, and yeah. then it was this whole overarching mystery with the Jumonji case and everything. Yeah, with someone's going around and stealing things from clubs, at, uh, Japanese alphabetically. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really is chaos because, and thank you for mentioning that, because we can segue into what was going on with Chitanda, which she was in charge of going to clubs and again, she had one in the bag, um, going to clubs and basically seeing if they can help sell the anthologies. But she kept getting freaking, she kept getting like tied, distracted, ending up becoming a model at one point for one of the people. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think we're there. Hold on a second. Okay. Ugh. Let me open the door. But continue. Oh, okay. Ending up becoming a model for like the photography club. Um... Uh, ending up becoming a model for the photography club, ending up just buying little things and then competing. She ends up... Hello. She ends up um, going to like a tarot card reading, right? And that's yeah. when they find out that one of the cards are stolen. Yeah. 
Yeah, but one of the weird things that was going on there is that someone was stealing stuff, and but then putting in like a note, yeah, basically saying I'm gonna bring it back, but like, haha, your item is now lost instead of saying things like stolen, not taken. Yeah, yeah. So what else? And then yeah, pretty much other than that as well. The only thing I want to add to everything, just so people like realize, like when it gets like mom, one of the big things about Jumanji. And this is one of the things I guess um, that's like, it's pretty much purely based like if you know Japanese or not, because when you translate over to the English and everything, it doesn't translate that well. Be it's kind of like the bucket one of the entire series as well. Yeah. But when you read Jumonji in Japanese and everything, and this is one of the things that help Oreki like, solve the mystery and everything, and after that, I'm not going to mention anymore because this is already a really big clue. Don't read it as a surname, but let Oreki explain what the characters actually mean and everything. Yeah. And then you're even realizing that, um, and one of the things that end up helping him too is that, um, um, it, wait, Ota, um, what were you calling him again? Otari? Ooh. Oreki? Um, yeah, Oreki. So it's Hotaro Oreki? Yeah, Hotaro Oreki. Oh, okay, so one of the things that also kind of helped him solve the, solve the case is that he realized that he's been pronouncing a specific name wrong. Yeah. And that ends up kind of falling into place on its own, too. But yeah, that, that's what goes down at the festival. You eventually find out that the manga that Mayaka had mentioned, A Corpse by Midnight, um, ends up playing into a way bigger part that even is affecting the girl that was kind of bullying her. Yeah. Which, again, that whole bullying thing was peeving me because one of them was even like, Flat out, I'm gonna spill a little bit of driplets on your um, uh, on the canvas that you're gonna work on, but then ends up running into a dude and ends up spilling it all over her costume. Yeah. Um, which again, I thought it was like some weird juice, but it was actually just dirty paint water. Yeah. Uh, that that got me mad. But yeah, what what else should we go go into now? You want to talk about what disappointed you at the end? Yeah. Because I think we're pretty much like at this point we can like already go to it. Yeah, alright, so before we hit final thoughts, we're gonna talk about one thing that just peeved me off. So if there's one thing- Oh, it's tea time! If I can play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if there's one thing any of you guys, um, I'll, I'll probably even post an older episode out. Is this a different one? Yes. Yeah. So, um, if there's one thing you guys will learn with me and, um, with me and uh, Lewis is we really do not appreciate unresolved ships. So when we did workplace, what was that one with the girl becoming like a government worker? Oh, servant and service. Servant and service. Uh, we really didn't appreciate all that build up to like a blooming relationship and mending one, and it's still being I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> not like you. Oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then also with um with um uh with um monthly girls Nozaki kun. Yeah, oh that one. That was, was such a cock block. Even to the point where Giga, I think it was Giga who brought up another kun, and that was like fireworks. Yeah. Where it was like the goddamn you stop ruining confessions for everyone. Um, but yeah, you have these just. Tell, you, you know, you just have these bits where it's like, you want to see them get together, but at the same time, things just don't work out. So, one of the big things that we've mentioned before is that Maika has a ginormous crush on, um, Fukube. on, on Fukube. And, you know, it has gone to confessing, getting turned down. Or being stood up. Being stood up, even being stood up as late as, like, the... The fourth episode, I think, when they're talking about like anger issues. Oh yeah, and then she was like, she was like, she was complaining about, like how how he stood her up the day earlier. Yeah, and um, getting having to stand out and getting a dress, one of her favorite dresses ruined. Yeah. Um, but you know the episode literally opens up such a dick, dick, dick thing. Opens up with saying, "I will not accept this chocolate because it's store bought." <laughs> Do you remember that? I'm like, why do you still go after him? Dude, like, so... I know, dude, that, that whole episode, I was just like, Fukumi, come on! Stop being a dick! But, 
this episode mainly does focus on Fukabe and the kind of person, instead of being the kind of person he is, it's mainly... My bad. Oh, I can really see that episode had you frustrated. Yeah. Man! <laughs> um, how the kind of person he used to be, like, like um, Fukube and um, Hotoro, they end up going to the arcade and playing a game that initially in middle school, um, Fukube would always play to win. Mm-hmm. And when he wouldn't, he would always get mad, throw a tantrum, and like request, demand a replay. Yep. And he realized that his playing style was a lot more reckless, a lot more laid back, and was nothing like what he used to be, even when he lost. Um, and on Mayuka and Shitanda's end, Mayuka wanted to make a chocolate that would just blow him out of the water. And when I mean blow him out of the water, I mean she didn't make him a piece of chocolate, she made him a goddamn cake. Oh yeah, <laughs> the, the whole the, the whole chocolate thing and everything. Oh dude, that for me was one of the more heartbreaking uh, mysteries. Literally. <laughs> no, don't do that to me. <laughs> that, that still makes me cry to this day. <laughs> it made me cry when I was in high school. It still makes me cry rewatching that whole thing on hold. So, um, yeah, and, and I don't mean it was a literal cake. I'm, I'm talking about like, if you guys have ever gone to like big fancy bakeries, or big fancy chocolate places, you will see a chunk of chocolate that is at least a good, maybe almost a foot big, yep. a foot wide. It, it's a, it was an incredibly giant chocolate heart. So and it's like one of those things that you can tell she put a lot of work into as well. Yeah, it, yeah, it was detailed. It was beautiful. Like again, I thought she really did make him a cake until he did what he did, um, and oh, they kept calling it a chocolate. So, so what ended up happening was Chitando was just sitting in the room, waiting for um, Fukube to show up and be surprised by the chocolate that Maya that Mayaka left him. But she ended up leaving to go look for um, to go look for Hotoro and be like, "Where's Fukube? He hasn't showed up." So when she goes back, she finds out that the chocolate was stolen and the clues that were given here were there was someone working there, but he's only ever seen three people go. Yeah. And they've only ever seen one person um, and they haven't seen anyone leave. They even made a comment that the person might not have even left the room Yeah. they were given. So, um... Yeah, because based on what happened and everything, like, they said, like, the culprit must still be close by if anything. There's not enough time has passed where they could have actually had left. Yeah. And, and one of the things that ended up going on was Mayaka shows up, finds out that the chocolate was stolen, and instead of being like, what the hell, well, let's go look for it, she had this... At, initially, I thought it was a look of relief. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm relieved it got stolen because now I don't have to be turned down again. But it really, now looking at it in hindsight, it was just a look of utter destruction. It was disappointment. Yeah, because at this point, like, she, she could have... She, you don't need a detective for her. She didn't need a detective really to figure out who, who did it. Yeah, and they end up talking to the other clubs on there and they're like, we have no idea. Um, even going as far to making a joke like... Like, um, none of us got, um, Valentine's, so you don't need to rub it in. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, Hotoro Bay Anish just tells her, yo, um, Shitanda, don't worry about it, I know you're torn up about it, but please just do, you know, just go home, I got it. It's this girl, I just need to talk to her about it. Mm-hmm. But it is, um, revealed that it was actually Fukube who stole it. And he initially found out that, like, it was in your little bag, and it was a tiny little bag. Yeah. Um, and it's like, well, you put it in your bag, but you realized it didn't fit. But you knew you had to get it out of there, and you didn't want people to see that it was in your hand. So you snapped it in half, but you didn't even think twice about doing it. There was no hesitation. You just did it, and you tried to sell the chocolate. So, initially, you can think, wow, this guy is a complete douchebag, what an irredeemable asshole. But then we go into why he did it. Yep. And it was initially, do you know why I'm a human encyclopedia? Why I know all this knowledge, but never really focus on one subject? It's because I have made peace with the fact that I am never going to be good at anything. Yep. 
and I'm just and Maika, she's an amazing girl, and it is still unreal to me that she wants me, that she wants to be with me, and the feelings are neutral. Yeah. And the reason I've been standing her up, turning her down, treating her the way I am. Because he doesn't really feel like he's like she deserves more. She feels like she deserves more. Yeah, like basically she deserves someone who has his life in order. And the episode basically ends with him giving her a phone call. And again, this is episode 21 out of a 22 episode anime. And it is never mentioned except in passing. Yeah. But there is no distinct what exactly was said, what's the relationship status now. And that is my one teeny criticism with the show is... That really should have been a last episode thing. This this was a big character arc that was opened up and initially never closed. Exactly. So it just pretty much left the, it leaves you with a better better taste in the end. Yeah. Like you know now all he needs is to be talked to by Mayaka, but we never told the details of what went down when he called her in the end, and that is why it angered me because we have a sh- we have a ship with no clear course out there in the ocean. And again, just leaving things with no proper piecing or salt or oh. reso- you know, resolutions, it is also very angering, but... Same thing with, with um, Oreki and Chitanda. Yeah. I- except, yeah, with Oreki and Chitanda, it is very much like, well, this was the fourth book. Yeah. So we knew it was going to be tied up in the fifth one. And they're big. They're like endgame confession. They're like in the last few chapters they're going to get together. But this is one that I would have really appreciated if they had just dealt with it for the last two episodes. I know. It would have been a good closer as well. But again, it's one of those shows that it's been 2012 and everything. And like not even the OVA like answers the question of what what happened afterwards. Yeah. Because afterwards was just like a pool party scene. Yeah, and the only Hioka related thing we had was a live action movie five years later, which I mean, come on. <laughs> um, people, people, even to this day, kind of forget when certain live action movies are made. Did you? Did any of you guys know there was a Nisekoi live action movie? Because I sure as hell forgot. I didn't even know that existed. Oh, dude, it it it's. I haven't seen it, but it is very much like we got Japanese actors, but put them in wigs exactly from the manga. So it's not even like, here's Kitoge with typical, you know, like black brown hair, but she has the big red bow. It's like, no, there's Kitoge in the wig. Um, um, Sugumi has blue hair. This character has blue hair. Um, Klaus, I think his name was. Yeah. Klaus has white hair. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those adaptations, the really funny ones. But yeah, so I think it's, Time for us to give closing thoughts, unless there's something else you wanted to bring up. No, I mean, you pretty much got everything for that final arc as well when it came to, like, just having that unresolved relationship issues. Yeah, a really unresolved... Yeah, not only was it, like, an unresolved character arc, but it was an unresolved relationship issue, and I think that bothers me the most. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think if anything, we're great to, well, I'm good to follow start with final thoughts. Yeah. So do you want to start off, or do you want me to start off? Yeah, let, yeah let, let, let's try to do the whole, um, the person who recommended it goes after. Okay. Because that's what I've been doing with you guys. Um, so, anyway, final thoughts is Hioka is one of those hidden little gems that if not for this show... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hioka is one of those hidden little gems that if not for this show, I probably would have never seen it. And remember how I told you the main character, the Chitanda, looks familiar to me? Yeah. It's because she was in this really horrific... <laughs> she was in this really messed up meme, but it was a photo of her in a classroom looking all scared, and it, it, you could tell it was just a portrait of the character that someone put word bubbles in. But it was uh, basically her in a classroom looking surprised, and it was a word bubble saying, You two are the exchange of students from America. What are you doing here? And you see two word bubbles at the bottom saying, Ah, oh, shit. This shorty be looking fine. Quick, hold her, hold her down. Zip. <laughs> I'm, oh, like, oh. I'm like, that's where I <laughs> first found out about that character. It was another very taboo um, photo. Bad dang. I found that, but blame her. Blame Sydney Wolf for that. Uh, so, wait, no, people don't know her Sydney Wolf anymore. Her name is Sharon Franco. She runs a clothing um, 
uh, a clothing thing called Sugar High Clothing. I won't go into any more detail unless she wants to sponsor us. Sponsor Sharon, <laughs> you owe me. No, you don't. Um, but yeah, so that's how I found out about this character. But again, I can't imagine what would have, if not for you, what would have got me to watch this show? How would I have found out about this show? Mm -hmm. And I'm so relieved that you did bring this up because in all honesty, again, I've been trying to put more, and my goal is to get three episodes out a week I only got three episodes out since the last week, and I'm talking about, like, one episode out on one week, one episode in the weekend, and then one episode this week. And the thing is, I can't lock you in that room anymore, because now it's got a TV and everything, so it's like, it wouldn't be a, like, wouldn't be a chamber. Well, that's why I said if we do that, we have to get a cage in- we actually have to get a cage in that room now, because you- even before there's a TV in there, there was- there is a fully functional- uh, computer in there. Yep. Which, I mean, who watches basic cable anymore? <laughs> Me. <laughs> because Game of Thrones. But, um, but yeah, um, I'm, one of the big things, I even texted you, I said, let it be known, the reason why I haven't posted anything yet is because of you. This show is so fucking good. The characters are so likable and relatable. They, they're one of those characters that they're moe, but they are never that level of, like, Wow, you're Moe to the point where I don't even really identify you guys as actual characters. Yeah. But they're so, you know, they're so relatable. And again, that whole thing with Mayaka in the manga club, I'm like, dude, that was me in the anime club. Like, wow, I, I totally get what this girl was going through. And I totally know people like that. Um, right. Huh? <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So... Um, yeah, um, I think the, the, um, the art direction, again, we talked about it here and there, but we didn't really talk about it a whole lot, but the art direction is as if these people saw Monogatari and are like, hey, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> because there's some beautiful art direction in there. Like, again, the whole thing with the movie, there's this whole thing where he's in a movie theater full of clapping hands but then you realize he's the only person in there and you see empty seats with animatronic hands just like clapping like doing automatic clapping and it's such a cool little interesting little um detail that they put in there mm -hmm. and again the relationships between the four main characters are great um it's never really stated why mayaka why mayaka didn't like um Oto, like, Oroki? Yeah, Oroki. Um, but I, you know, as kind of annoying it was, it was actually really funny, and she did genuinely, like, respect him as the show went on. Yeah. Um, and then Chitanda, and again, the relationship between Chitanda and um, Hotoro was so freaking adorable that I am, like, that's, I'm a little bit more at peace with their resolution, because I know their re resolution is to come, because the end game. But, um, again, the, the whole relationship with Mayaka and, um, f and, um, f uh, Fukube, I didn't think they were ever gonna, like, r resolve that. I thought that was just gonna be a, a an ongoing joke. Yeah. yeah. And eventually it is brought up, but it isn't exactly resolved. But even then, I'm just, again, like, you, you saw how kind of irritated we got, and that's, how much this show invested me into it. So this is actually one of those shows that I think I will be recommending to a few people. I know my friend Yana and, well, Daniel doesn't really have a whole lot of time now, but they, they would be the two go-to people I'd make watch this show. Uh, again, I highly recommend the show and thank Lewis for um, exposing me to this. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for giving me a good one and not a chaotic one. <laughs> Mind you guys, if you think this is classical music, this is actually part of the OST for Hyoka. Because holy shit, that show has nothing but classical music going throughout most of it. Yeah, actually, if I'm right, that opens up every episode, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My turn. Oh, no, that's not me. Who's <laughs> that? Avengers Endgame. Oh, we gotta be careful because now even they're showing a little too much. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> but... Uh-huh. No! <laughs> not the honesty I'm looking for, but just to get started while I listen for what I'm looking for. Yes. 
All right, I'll go with this one. <laughs> okay. But for me, <laughs> time to make Danny feel old again. This is yet again one of these shows that I picked up in high school. I know, you mentioned it earlier, and I'm like, oh, you found this out literally around the time it came out. Which, yes, it was when Lewis was in high school. I actually found it the, like, a, the year, um, a year after it came out, like in 2013 or so. Still 2013? You were a senior in 2013? Junior. No, I was a sophomore. Oh, God, a sophomore. That's even worse. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna get used to that one day. But yeah, this is actually one of the shows that I watched because of all the memes that people were throwing around and everything as well. So, one of the reasons why I watched the show, if anything, because um, I think before this, I had watched, I had like already watched my teen romantic comedy Snafu. Yeah. And I was like looking for shows that were similar to it as well. And I was like going through the Facebook pages and everything. And somebody recommended me Hyoka. And I was like, huh? I was like, interesting. I'm like, don't know what to think about this yet, but like, alright, I'll give it a try. And did not regret it when I first started and everything as well. So, when I first initially watched it, and everything. This is actually one of these shows that got me like really like into uh, me because like I made my best friend watch it with it as well. But it really got my my friend and I to like really like get into like um to making our own like little novel and everything as well. Yeah. Because like watching all these slice of lives and everything, we're like, hey, you know what? I'm kind of down to like make up make make like a script of ourselves as well. Like it doesn't have to be like anything too far out of anything. It just be like um just something like simple following like the slice of life format. Like mm-hmm. you just have people going through like high school or like whatever. <laughs> You know, going through like their everyday motions and like just something, um, something in their lives happens that like, you know, makes it a little bit interesting for like to kind of break the status quo. And for me, the thing that got me to this about this show, again, the artwork, because it just looks so gorgeous, like you said. Yeah. It's kill any. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, it, it looked like just a step below of the animation that was in a silent voice. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much again as well. Watching the show, like, not only just, for me, what got me about this show was not only, like, seeing, like, um, like, the relatable bits and everything as well, but just how the show explained, like, the thought process that, um, especially Oreki went through in order, like, when he, like, came about, like, solving mysteries. Mm-hmm. For me, those visual representations were just beautiful. Just yeah. showing, like, how his mind worked and, like, why he was thinking a certain way or, like, why he was thinking, like, why, why his, like, um, why what he said made sense and everything as well. Yeah, or when things were, like, overwhelming to him and they would just be, like, letters popping out of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. And for me, the best part, I think, like, the thing that was, like, really satisfying at the end is just seeing these characters grow throughout the whole series and everything. Yeah. And just like seeing, you know, like how they developed, how they, where their relationships went through and everything. And more importantly, just how they changed. Because, you know, by the end, like, Oreki, if anything, like, you really see, you really get to see Oreki, like, coming out of his shell. And, like, really, like, starting to become more and more proactive. Yeah. And for me, just like seeing him go like that and everything, like, being the weeb I was in high school and everything. <laughs> after watching the show and everything, every time I went to, um, every time I went to like a quiz or something, I do that thing that he does with his head when he was solving a mystery, and I'd be like, hmm, what is the answer for this question? <laughs> Thinking that it would have helped me. It yeah. Did not. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I felt smart when I did that. Yeah. There's always there's always a visual tick everyone will have when they're trying to think on. No man. No, I am man. And again, this show for me. It'll always hold another, again, always, this is one of those few shows that holds a special place in my heart only because it was one of those few shows I started to explore right after, yeah, right after Attack on Titan. Oh, yeah. That was like 2012, right after it happened. Yeah, Attack on Titan was the gateway anime for like the three of us, right? Yep. Yeah. So like for me... No, 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 sorry. It was the gateway for you and me, but Ben was solely there. Yeah. Yeah. And then for me... This is like one of, this is one of these shows, so this one, my team romantic comedy snafu, and then the world god only knows. Ooh. I know. God damn that show is so good and needed a proper ending. God I know. damn you mong globe. <laughs> and then uh, She did not she uh. A lot of those characters deserved better. Let, let, let's just put it that way. That that should have been that that should have been the alternate name. It was the world um <laughs> God damn it, the girls God only cares about or something. Yeah. The, world, the, the girls you only know or something. Because like, that show pretty much did a good job of making every girl best girl. Oh, yeah. And by, by like the end of the series, I think it was like over 20 girls, I think, that were like best girls. Mm-hmm. Like even the ones who disappeared. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much my take on Hyoka. This was for me 
a high school favorite and still a favorite rewatching it again. Oh yeah. I, I totally agree with you there. This is one of those I've seen so many good anime. I've seen so many anime trying to be this. I've seen an anime that probably inspired this, animation wise. Um, but I really do gotta say I want more things like this now. I want more things that are intricate and character based. And I mean, again, there's a lot of anime here, and that is why we do what we do. And if anything, for me, like the best way I can describe the show, it's a fresh breath of air from Isekai. Yeah. Because like, it's a lot fun of watching. Isekai. It's fun watching like a lot of like the you know like a lot of like battles and shonens and everything. But for me, every once in a while, I like to like go back to reality and kind of check out the slice of life, something that's more relatable. Yeah. So what was the show that we did last week? Oh, Ajin, right? Yep. So still keeping in with, still keeping in tune with, um, slowing things down a little bit because um, we had the intense over the top action of uh, Genlock and then followed up the intense over the top insanity that was Grand Blue, yeah. the, and then of course just the straight out intense intensity of um, Ajin. We slowed it down big time with Hiyoka. And I think, even though it is a little crazy here and there, we will still be within the slowed down nature of Dorarara. And this will be kind of a special thing. This will probably be our first month anime themes ever since we started the new format. Yeah. Because it used to be a lot of me choosing this stuff with occasionally you and Ben chiming in. And then it just turned into me realizing you guys need more of a city, so... Um, so yes, it will be our first month ever since this new format kicked in. So we will be doing the entirety, and I'm talking all of it, of um, except OBAs. Um, uh, I mean, like if we watch that, we watch that. If we don't, then no big deal. Yeah. Um, of Durarara, which of course you guys know as the 2007 anime that really blew up on Toonami, and God, it is still a miracle that we had a sequel. Like six years later? Yeah, and like dude. Over eight years later. You have no idea no one else in high school, just how many people had bought the manga at that point, the manga. Yeah, the manga. And then it blew up, like, and then when the second season came out, the popularity blew up to the point where even, like, I think it was Vertical, no, Yenfest, Yenfest put out the light novel, which was such a big deal that even, like, um, Barnes and Noble had a launch event for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. We'll get to that. Tune in for that next week. It will literally be first season, um, second season part one, one week, second season part two, the next week, and then so on. Um, it should stick within the entire month month of May unless anything personal pops up. Yep. Yeah. But I think we should be pretty good to go. Yeah, we should. It, I can't imagine unless like a schedule change. Um, I know I have these people that kind of want me to become the permanent dog walker and gardener. Not gardener, but like yard, garden, like water. Yeah. Waterer. But